What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tania Bright. I am a student astrologer, a mystic, and a tarot reader. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing your April 2020 predictions. The tarot readings are timeless though, whenever you stumble upon them is when you're supposed to receive this message. So don't feel discouraged if it's not April anymore. I am going to be doing things a little bit differently. I do want to incorporate some astrology into these month ahead readings. So we are going to be talking about your sun sign and where that's transiting your chart. I also quickly kind of want to talk about Saturn being in Aquarius right now because I feel like it's very relevant since we have this pandemic going on. Saturn is a very innovative energy. It's all about the collective. It's all about bringing forth new ideas. It's a rebellious sign too. So usually it's about changing things for the better. And then we have Saturn, its home sign, which is about law, structure, boundaries, and resetting the status quo. It's also really challenging our philosophy and our values as a collective and how we are are attached I guess to like material things. For a lot of us our material lifestyle changed since a lot of us are out of work right now or you know might not be covered by our jobs. A lot of us are also forced to be at home with our families right now. We aren't able to go out due to quarantine. So there's a lot of like change going on socially and I feel like we're really lucky to have Aquarius in its home sign of Saturn right now because it's an energy that really like brings forth new ideas after like a point of destruction. It really is like an energy that brings up the collective. The like quarantine right now is really forcing like a new social culture and it's also kind of making us face a lot of, I don't want to say problems, but a lot of issues that we might have ignored in the home life. It's really forcing a lot of introspection right now since a lot of us are, you know, like we have a lot more time on our hands. We're spending a lot more time in isolation. So it's forcing this level of introspection. So a lot of us are able to really dive deep within ourselves and ask us like, am I in the right place right now? Am I doing what I, you know, am I doing something that truly like fulfills me on a soul level? Aquarius is a very like emotionally detached sign so I feel like a lot of us too are having hard times or having a hard time sort of connecting with people on that level but with all of this energy being accompanied by like the double ones so like rat year and Aries season there's a lot of newness here as well so I feel like this combination of energies is really kind of like putting us in a place to find what's meant for us to find you know what truly feeds our soul it's bringing in a lot of new hobbies for people a lot of new ideas a new approach to you know social cuts social cultures social structures and whatnot it's a lot of uncharted territory i almost feel like the universe threw us this curve ball so we can sort of restructure our lives does that make sense even the government itself i feel like is restructuring um and a lot of astrologers predicted this back when saturn was actually in capricorn they were saying social structures would fall and that we would have a new way of life so I really want to just remind you guys to be brave and fearless during this time of adversity and really try to find the bright side of things I know that's difficult but there are always a you know there's always a light to the darkness there's always a bright side to the things so try to find the beauty within the chaos since a lot of us are so limited in terms of resources is really going to teach us how to use the resources that we do have to its utmost value and I think that's a lesson that we needed as a society we have become super attached to having more and more and more that we sort of set it up for ourselves to never feel like we have enough so really as a society we're forced to kind of face our attachments to our routines to our goals because a lot of that got you know shaken up and maybe like uh disrupted during this time this is really sort of challenging our philosophy on material gains in specific and how we use that and what we do with that so i feel like when we come out of quarantine which a lot of astrologers are predicting might happen in may when saturn dips back into capricorn um i feel like we are going to sort of be tested here by the universe on what lessons did we learn during uh this pandemic like are we going to step out of this pandemic as a society who you know learned that 
we have to share, that we are only as strong as our weakest links, that you know, everyone deserves health care, everyone deserves paid time off when they're sick, everyone deserves a roof over their heads. As a society, we should see this almost as like a reset period, you know, who are we when we come out of quarantine? It was really just brought to light how selfish we can be as a society when we were like clearing out all the shelves of like toilet paper and whatnot. I think it really showed us like as a society what we would do in times of like chaos. And adversity and you know scary times and I feel like that's something to take note of because if we were to continue that during like you know an apocalypse or whatever we wouldn't survive it would be a dog-eat-dog -dog world we would separate we wouldn't know how to stand together and I feel like that is a key lesson to learn here is how can we stand together as a society also with us being in Aries season especially quarantine during Aries season, I feel like it's really important for us to figure out ways how to exert energy because Aries is a very energetic sign so I feel like a lot of us might have like our sleep patterns turned you know like kind of like thrown off or like we might even have a harder time falling asleep than usual so I feel like this isn't a time to kind of like sit here and sulk in laziness and lethargicness I feel like we have to find ways to exert this energy that airy season is blessing us with so hard work you know work on your careers work on your goals uh, this is a good time to exercise this is a good time to try to eat right and do right by your body all right so that was my little spiel on this sort of pandemic which I didn't want to ignore um, let's go ahead and get into these readings so um, I calculated what house the sun is transiting for you based on your rising sign um so when i do talk about that do you know watch it for your rising sign but you're more than welcome to watch it for your moon uh sun and mercury as well what's up taurus so we are going to be talking about where the sun is transiting your chart right now so it is transiting your 12th house and from there it is going to go into your first house so first of all, let's talk about what sun is in astrology. So sun is your outward personality, uh, your ego, it has to do with your father, it has to do with career, and wherever it sits on your birth chart or whatever it trans wherever it transits, it illuminates that house. It, it kind of works like a flashlight and like lights up that house. So let's talk about what the 12th house is. So the 12th house is the house of isolation, it's the house of self uh, transcendence it's the house that holds like the repressed parts of ourselves it's like the deepest parts of our mind and then we have it jumping to the first house which is a huge jump because that is all outward so the 12th house is all inward introspection and then we have the first house which is all outward you know the outward self the mask we have for this world so there's this there's this um energy of like really diving from the depths of your brain and the depths of your subconscious to the very most frontal parts of your brain Taurus so this is an interesting month for you guys this is a month where you guys really align your outward life with your innermost selves which is such a beautiful blessing Taurus so the first half of the month you might find yourself being very introspective very lethargic uh 12th house is the home of pisces so maybe super imaginative maybe like out of your head a bit and not in like a bad way you guys are kind of like in this just i i, I know what i'm trying to like describe it but you guys are sort of like in your own world do you know what i mean this it's like a place in your head where you guys just live it's very piscean um very like meditative that's that's the state i was talking about like that meditative state i think you guys are gonna be in that state quite a bit the first half of april you might even find yourself having a lot of intuitive visions or a lot of intuitive messages uh because 12th house is the house of intuition and like the other realm but i feel like through that introspection you guys are really going to find your direction in life so then when your son moves into the first house you really take everything you've learned and you apply it to real life you apply it to the earth realm you apply it to your outward self and your goals and your career and you know the mask that you wear for the world it might change it might become a little bit more truer to what's actually in your soul there's going to be a lot of aha moments for you lots of epiphanies this month all right taurus so that is all i have to say in terms of where the sun is transiting your birth chart let's go ahead and get into your tarot reading 
Hello Taurus and welcome to your tarot reading. So we are going to be doing a month ahead reading and for this we are going to be pulling some oracle cards, moonology cards, tarot cards, and confirmation cards. Alright, so let's go ahead and see what the month of April 2020 has in store for you. Okay. So these are your oracle cards. These are going to show us sort of what central themes are surrounding you, what energies you might need to embody uh, this month, or what might even be hindering you. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. I'm going to let as many cards fall as needed. What oracle messages do we have for Taurus in regards to April 2020? Right, I'm going to give it another pass. I feel as though more messages need to come out or more themes need to come out. Wow. Wow. Ooh, okay, okay. That one fell on the floor. All right, let me grab the one that fell on the floor. And then let's go ahead and talk about all of these central themes. So first one we have is obstacles and challenges. Then we have transformation, shadow, which is so interesting because I was just talking about how you guys sort of go from your subconscious to your conscious, to your most your innermost selves to your most outermost selves, and I feel like that really confirms that. And then we have triumphant success, partnerships and alliances, victory and success, moving on, destiny, solar plexus and universe which i think is so beautiful that the universe card is here because i was telling you guys that the 12th house is a very um uh, intuitive month and that you may receive a lot of intuitive messages or visions or dreams so i think that's really cool that the universe card is here um as well as the destiny card is here because like i said i feel like you guys are really going to do a lot of introspection and sort of find your place in this world because of that since you are going from a 12 to the one you have the biggest jump out of all the zodiac signs hence why the transformation card is here it's a huge transformation but with our triumphant success and our victory and success here it seems as though you guys are going to handle it well and you're going to you know really use this time to your advantage um then we have partnerships and alliances here so i feel like this is also maybe a time uh where you guys tighten any type of friendships or connections or relationships that you guys have okay um and i don't know too much about chakras so i'm not going to speak on the solar plexus chakra but you're more than welcome to look that up um i know yellow is uh the color of happiness though so it's kind of like a beautiful uh, color to have in this spread um, but let's go ahead and pull some moonology messages for you guys now. So those were like the themes you were going to be dealing with this month. Central themes. Alright, so let's get some moonology messages. Alright, what moonology messages do you have for Taurus in regards to April 2020? Again, I'm going to let as many falls needed. There's one... I have one more pass. I feel like at least one more wants to come out. There's the one. No, oh, this guy wants to come out too. All right, I feel like that's it. Let's go ahead and go through these messages. First one we have is bring love into the situation, new moon in Aquarius, especially when you're doing all that introspection and you're in all that isolation and you are very much in your head space, bring love into it, Taurus. This is not the time to self-deprecate. This is not the time to, um, you know, talk. How, you're going to be having a lot of conversations with yourself this month. Um, so this is not the time to have a bad internal monologue. All right, um, and then I have you and your loved ones are safe. What a beautiful, beautiful card to receive during this pandemic. Um, nothing will come from this situation. So if there's a situation that you are hung up on, um, I think this is where you realize like that you don't need to be hung up on it, okay? Because it doesn't really serve you. Then we have it's time to release negativity, full moon in Scorpio. Um, I have communication is key, new moon in Gemini, so Cancer, Scorpio, Gemini, and Aquarius energy here. And then finally, we have the energy is gaining momentum, waxing moon. All right. 
I love this. Communication is key. And I love how it's like two of the same person because like I said, you are going to be communicating a lot with your self, with that inner voice you have in your head. So, and releasing the negativity, I feel like that is what you are going to be working on a lot this month as well. All right, let's go ahead and pull tarot and see what is going on weekly for you. So my tarot cards are all upright. Um, so if any of them fall in reverse, I will read the reversal though. It's just the way Spirit intended the message if they fall in reverse, but I like to give them um, all a fair chance at being upright first. All right, first week for Taurus of April. What's going on the first week of April for Taurus? First week of April for Taurus. All right, there's your first week of April. Second week of April for Taurus, second week of April. Ooh, there's one, second week of April for Taurus. Second week of April for Taurus. Two. Wow, look at all this major arcana popping out for you guys. What's accompanying that strength card for the third week of April? What's accompanying that straight or strength card for the third week of April? Here we go. And then last week of April for Taurus. Last week of April. Ooh. Woo, look at that Wheel of Fortune card popping out. All right, so here's your last week. Take a second real quick to just make it pretty and sort of meditate on this. See if I get any, like, channeled messages. Okay, let's go ahead and flip these cards. So first week we have Two of Rods being written down by WoW, Ten of Pentacles, love that for you. Um, and then I have Empress with Temperance, which is very supportive, I believe, of what I was saying. And then I have the Strength card being written down by, mm-hmm, okay, Two of Pentacles and Wheel of Fortune with, woo, Nine of Cups. What a beautiful, beautiful spread, Taurus. All right, let's talk about this. So, first week, we have the Ten of Pentacles with the Two of Rods. Ten of Pentacles is all about building uh, something for the long run. It's about longevity. It's about things lasting through the generations, all right? So with the two of rods here, you guys are going to be really contemplating that. You're going to be contemplating, you know, um, relationships, career, um, your life and yourself and how you can build it up so it lasts for you through the long run. So you're going to be thinking, you know, how can I uh, build a career for myself that truly makes me good money and allows me to support my family you're going to be thinking you know are the relationships that i'm in you know supportive of what i want in the long run and will they last are they relationships that are going to last are these are these people loyal so that is going to be what you're doing the first week second week we have the empress and temperance so i feel like second week is when you kind of really dive into that headspace um so it's really important to give yourself a lot of uh tender loving care i feel like you're this is also a week where you finally birth the idea so first week we're contemplating second week we really start to birth these ideas and these solutions and of what you know of how we can sort of build this life for ourselves um, and I feel like it's also really important to um, temper your emotions and make sure that they're in balance and they're in check because you do have your son transiting a water sign so it is you know it could be quite an emotional experience for you um, but I feel like it's really important to keep yourself in balance, okay? And allowing things to flow in and out as needed, okay? So if you need to cut stuff off, cut stuff off. If you need to, you know, apologize to someone, let that back in. Apologize to someone, let that back in. Let things flow as needed, you know, give and take as needed, okay? And then third week, we have strength and the two of pentacles. So two of pentacles is all about juggling a lot, so you might be juggling a lot mentally and emotionally. That's what I'm kind of getting. It could also be um, financially and materialistically as well because it is pentacles. But intuitively, I'm getting that this is more so an emotional and mental thing that you have to juggle. But two pentacles upright means you can. You can handle it. You can juggle it. All right. Strength card here um, is just reminding you to be strong, to... Um, 
support yourself through this experience through this week truly truly support yourself okay and then fourth week so this is where we're now um in the first house um where your son is in the first house you have wheel of fortune and nine of uh, cups so nine of cups is all about what you wish for what you manifest okay whatever you wish for you manifest is on the other side of this gate uh, so the way to get through that gate is you have to give the gatekeeper the key. You have to, get, you have to give the gate, gatekeeper the 10th cup. And I feel like you guys are really going to give up that 10th cup. Whatever it is that needs to be surrendered in order for you to make your dreams come true, you will surrender. And in doing so, things really work out in your favor. The wheels start to turn in your favor. This is a very lucky card as well. So you might even get opportunities that really support you uh, during this time. Okay? Um, let's go ahead and pull some confirmation cards now. Love this spread. Love this month for you. It's really, it's really a month about yourself, Taurus. It's self-improvement, self-transformation. All right, let's get some confirmation cards in here. Confirmation for Taurus for April 2020, please. Confirmation for Taurus in April 2020. Empress is here again. All right. Before I even flip these cards, I am getting an intuitive messages for some of you. This might not be for all of you, but Taurus, I feel like there is someone you need to make amends with. Again, you might not all resonate with this since it is a collective reading, but I am going to throw this out here, out there for whoever it's for. Taurus, there is someone that you have to make amends with or there is some some type of connection with someone that might be bothering you or like you want to reconnect with somebody or something of that nature so if that is true I would not do it until the end of the month until you've had that period of introspection again that's not for every tourist but let me just throw that out there um, so let's go ahead and go through the confirmation cards now. First one we have is Five of Raphael. It says, everything happens for a reason. Release regret and embrace the opportunities for happiness. Search for silver lining. I was picking up on that word, but I didn't quite say it. But regret, like there was like a connection that you might re have regret losing or a connection that um, you were you would just like regret throwing away. I, I definitely picked up on that, but let's keep going. So we have the Empress. So it says time to act upon your plans. Creativity is rewarded. Luxurious or abundant resources. All right. So making sure we're also really taking care of ourselves throughout this time. Then we have Ace of Ariel. It says is your lucky day new resources of money, time, and support. A change in job or promotion. I feel like that really supports our Nine of Cups energy and our wheel of fortune energy and of course the empress i think really supports our strength energy as well as temperance and of course the empress card let's go ahead and go through the last couple confirmations um we have nine of raphael make a wish dreams become a reality that right there is confirming our nine of cups wish card so truly what you guys manifest is uh, going to come into fruition. I told you when work when your son's transiting a water sign house. I feel like that's very much true. Then I have four of Ariel. When you give, you also receive. Being resistant to change, extremes in how you save or spend money. If that isn't a super Taurus card, <laughs> so making sure that we are not super extreme with our money, that we're allowing flow, allowing things to come and go as needed. This is not the time to have a attachment to materialistic things with that Saturn and Aquarius. Okay um but yeah so that's it for your month ahead reading thank you so much for clicking on this video taurus and don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below if this resonated with your sun moon rising or mercury the most okay i would love to hear back from you um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video